Y'all ready? Well, y'all, thank you coming out. This is a this is a good day. It's a great day in South Carolina, but it's also a good day for the people of South Carolina, uh, for, uh, all over the state, because Brian Sterling, our director of corrections, is once again uh, showing innovation, improvisation, and progress in correction uh, facilities and, and innovation. As you know, we've had a problem for years with cell phones. As the cell phones are getting more powerful, more abundant, and smaller, easier to conceal, more and more of them are finding their way into the prisons. And we know now all over the, the United States, people are on the outside are throwing cell phones over the fence and smuggling them inside in various ways. And once that cell phone gets inside, the prisoner inside uh, who has contacts on the outside can conduct a criminal enterprise, organize hits, organize theft, blackmail, all sorts of things like that, even kidnappings, and we've seen that happen all over the country. Unfortunately, the federal law as written does not allow the jamming of the cell phone signals for a variety of reasons. Director Sterling has been innovative and is the, the leader in the, in the United States in getting that rule changed, working to get that rule changed, and finding other ways to see that the prisoners that are inside are, are safe and secure and that the people outside are safe and secure, including the, the prison personnel as well. These th cell phones are a threat to everyone's safety inside and out. The Department of Corrections in 2016 alone confiscated more than 7,000 cell phones. So I have issued a, an executive order that declares an emergency in the South Carolina prisons due to this contraband, and I order the State Guard, the South Carolina State Guard, under the uh, leadership, under the command of Major General Tom Mulliken to assist the Department of Corrections in patrolling the exterior of the correctional facilities and fence towers to prevent such contraband from being thrown over or dropped by drones over the fences or in any other way. We have a number of people here today to explain this and provide the details. I'll be followed by Director Brian Sterling and then by Major General Tom Mulliken of the South Carolina State Guard, then Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott, who has participated in this program, and also Lee County Sheriff Daniel Simon. Mr. Sterling. Thank you. I'm actually going to defer to the general here. I always defer to a general. Go ahead, General. This is General McCarty of the National Guard. On behalf of Major General Bob Livingston, the Adjutant General of South Carolina, uh, the Military Department of South Carolina is pleased to have the opportunity to participate in this initiative. As outlined by the governor, uh, we look at this as an opportunity to help augment the force of the Department of Corrections to provide security and safety for the correctional officers and to include the inmates that are housed here at the correctional facilities in South Carolina. Uh, the State Guard is a entity of the military department. It has approximately a thousand volunteers. Uh, approximately 60 of those are part of our Provost Marshal Detachment. They're certified law enforcement officers and they will be assigned to this detail. Uh, they are not here to engage directly with the inmates or the staff. They have a role that will have what we would determine or call a presence patrol on the outside perimeter of the facility. They will be looking for the exchange of contraband and will be coordinating with the staff here at the Department of Corrections to ensure there is a safe transfer of anything that may be deemed contraband here on the facilities. Again, we're proud to have the opportunity to help in this capacity. We realize the seriousness of the situation and the limited resources that the Department of Corrections has and if we are able to do something here to assist that may help uh, public safety and the safety of our corrections officers and inmates, we're proud to have that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, General. Director Sterling. Good morning, Brian Sterling, South Carolina uh, Department of Corrections. Director, I want to thank uh, Governor McMaster and I want to thank the State Guard for stepping up and accepting this mission. We've been talking about this for several years now. Today's the day that we're going to announce it. We're going to work on the MOU. 
This literally will help ensure the safety of our institutions by allowing us to take our perimeter security. As you all saw when you came through the front gate, that's heavily staffed. That's going to be one of the places that we're going to look at putting folks. You can see the towers behind us. We're going to put folks up there and then um, driving around in the rover vehicles. So we'll be able to move all those folks inside to make it more secure for officers like these that are standing behind us and for the, the folks that are incarcerated. With these cell phones, we're doing everything we can, but we are seeing a spike in contraband coming in. Um, cell phones make it easy to coordinate and to pay for, which is a public safety issue. We've had meetings with the FCC. We've had meetings with the Department of Justice. Um, they're supportive, but we're not there yet. So to augment it until we get there, we're going to um, use our state resources and I just want to thank the, um, the guard for being here, and I'm, with that, I'm going to go with Major General Mulligan for uh, more remarks. Thank you. General Mulligan. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to appear here at the podium under the strong leadership of our governor and our commander-in-chief, Governor Henry Master, and we appreciate his efforts along with uh, Director Sterling. We've been protecting South Carolina since 1670, and we're delighted and honored to have this opportunity to, to help stand up and protect not only the guards, but those in the host community of the prisons that we'll be supporting as a force multiplier. We have roughly a thousand members, as uh, General McCarty mentioned, and not only th will this be an effective solution, it'll be a cost efficient solution because those services provided by our professionals are offered at no cost to the state. No different than the 44,000 hours that we served during the recent natural disasters, the hurricanes, we will provide the same level of professional services to the state of South Carolina, and we're honored to do that for our great governor, Henry McMaster, and our director, Brian Sterling. Thank you. Thank you, General. Sheriff Lott. Just because a criminal gets set um, behind these fences doesn't mean they stop being a criminal. They've been able to carry out their criminal enterprises by using the cell phones. For the past year in Richland County and also in Lee County for the past year, uh, Director Sterling has paid deputies to patrol uh, his facilities. We've seized just in Richland County over 800 phones last year. Uh, we've apprehended probably almost 30 people that's been throwing contraband over. Uh, this impacts us in Richland County and I know also in Lee County. So, you know, these criminals are continuing their enterprises outside by using the cell phones. So it's very important that we've been able to work with the Department of Corrections on trying to stop that. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it for free. Uh, Director Sterling's been having to pay our deputies to work this. Now with the State Guard, they're going to replace our deputy sheriffs that we have here, but they're going to replace them with fr by being free, which helps out the state and helps out all of us. So, you know, we're honored to be part of this. We're honored to, to continue to work with the Department of Corrections to try to stop these criminals from carrying out the things that they've been doing from inside these prisons. You know, this is just another step. I think our state, you know, sometimes gets criticized that we're last in a lot of things, but we're first in this. I think we're probably one of the first states to be able to do this. Um, first state that I think that Department of Corrections, the state agency use local law enforcement to supplement their manpower. Now by using the state guard, that's another innovative way that we're probably first uh, in doing that. Free manpower, free guard service, free uh, to our citizens that we can protect them by using the state guard. Daniel Simon. Um, yes, just to add on, this is a great partnership. Um, we started this about a year and a half ago, but we've been actually doing some interception for the last four or five years. Uh, just like Sheriff Lott said, we've intercepted way over four or five hundred uh, packages coming in. Uh, we've made probably around, around 50 arrests. So it has helped great, a great deal in providing safety, not only for the Department of Correction, for the citizens of, of the state. Um, it varies where they come from. They come from all walks of the state. So it's not just one general area where we're making an arrest. It's all over the state. And I, once again, I'm greatly appreciative that we have partnership with the state. And I ought to add the 22 states that have a state guard, but I don't think there's another state that has the working relationship and the professional relationship and, and capacity that our State Guard and our National Guard have. So this is another asset that we have here in South Carolina and, and what we've done with the ingenuity of these uh, leaders here is, is, is found a way to combine those assets to have even a more powerful
presentation to make uh, to keep the citizens of the of the state safe. So with that, we'll uh, be glad to answer questions. Any questions? Yes, sir. So yes, so um, right now, class one law enforcement, these are just class one law enforcement under leadership of uh, Sheriff Lott. There's about 60, they're continuing to recruit, but we're gonna look at 60 and we're gonna start with a pilot and go from there and that, those are the details that we're gonna work out. So again, that's a supplement to the numbers that we already have here, which is, which is great. And everything else we're doing, you know, netting, cameras, overtime, I mean, you name it, our recruiting, everybody sees the billboards. This is just a concerted effort by, by the state and by the Department of Corrections. What? Uh, it's going to be statewide eventually. That's where we hope to go with this. Yes, sir. The, the state guard has has 60 certified law officers among its uh, personnel at this time. Yes, correct? sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> More questions for anyone? So. So what we're going to do is just like with our correctional officers, they're going to be on the perimeter and they're going to have contact either with the control room or they will have contact with um, with local law enforcement to respond just like we do with our, our correctional officers. This will be a new set of eyes. It'll be an alert system, uh, but it will be manned, so to speak, by professionals who have been in emergency situations before and, and no danger and have experienced it and, and know precisely what they're doing and are highly and well trained. It is it's really a great complement to what Director Sterling is doing with the uh, with the prisons. Any more questions? Major General, talk about maybe expanding the scope of what you guys provide already for the state and different things. You have many different assets you use. This is a new new venture you could say. Over the last six or seven years, we've really rebuilt the South Carolina State Guard. Um, like other organizations, seen vicissitudes since 1670. And long before Governor McMaster became governor, he had been a supporter of, the, of our de defense force. Today, we have 25 judge advocate officers, lawyers. We have more than 60 medical officers. We have more than 150 professional engineers. We have 25 ecclesiastical chaplains. We have 60 licensed law enforcement officers and over 300 search and rescue professionals. So what we've tried to do under the guidance of our Adjutant General, General Livingston, is serve as a force multiplier uh, to complement, not to compete with existing resources. So this emergency is a perfect example of how we step in that void. We have 60 now. We intend to recruit more as the mission, if should the mission grow. We will meet this and we will protect South Carolina. So with this 60, we'll start with a pilot. We'll be reaching out. Uh, Sheriff Lott, Deputy Commander of the State Guard, uh, General Lott, and I will be meeting with law enforcement agencies across the state to recruit additional personnel. And we will meet whatever that challenge is. Any more questions? How does this correspond with the, the continuing efforts to staff up the Department of Corrections? Sure. sure. Absolutely, that is a consideration. As, as you see with our recruiting efforts, we're actually going to have a, um, a mass recruiting, mass hiring event tomorrow where we hope to hire 70. Most of those will be correctional officers. But from this time last year, we're up over 100 officers. That's the first time since probably 2011. And you all have heard me talk about this. Every year since 2011, we've been down an average from the year before about 150, 140 to 150 officers. We've come out of the recession. So, you know, we hit a number and now we're turning that number around. We have put a substantial amount of resources and money into our correctional officers with pay raises, with overtime, with bonuses and things of that nature. And I'll be announcing something more on the bonuses coming up later today at a correctional officer rep meeting. But we're doing everything we can to hire and retain folks. And you're seeing that on your TV stations. We're seeing that in the billboards and radio, all the advertising and increasing recruiting. So it is something that we are dealing with in South Carolina, and I think you're seeing the um, results of it. It's not, it didn't happen overnight, and it's not going to be fixed overnight, but we are going in the right direction. And South Carolina is not the only state to, uh, to see this problem. A lot of other southern states see this problem. Um, you know, 
northern states, it, it's a correctional problem, but it's also a law enforcement problem. A lot of law enforcement agencies are having a hard time because of pay and other things and recruiting folks. And we're no different than them, and we're doing everything we can. And as you see, we're, we're adding to that for the safety of our officers. That is paramount to my mission as director of the Department of Corrections is make sure that my officers are safe every day when they report to work. And of course, as you recall, in my executive budget, I've asked the legislature to exempt retirement pay of military personnel, law enforcement officers, peace officers, as those work here, as well as first responders from income taxes completely. And also, as, as, well, as well as a 15% income tax across the board for everyone else. And also, uh, the governor's put in his executive budget another $1,000 for officers to continue um, the pay raises that are desperately needed. This be the first time um, we did one two years ago last year and we're hoping to get one this year but that's the first time in at least a decade that these officers have received a pay raise any more questions Well, uh, yes, an emergency is by its by definition a te is temporary. But you can say we have an emergency every day, as long as we have have cell phones going into these prisons, because we have people that are suffering the consequences every day. Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you see an end in sight where you won't need the National Guard? You guys will just go that, to the that, when, when they quit throwing the phones over, we'll we'll. Stop. But that's the goal. The goal is to. Um, with the state guard it's not the national guard just to be clear it's state guard and they're not going to be in our prisons per se they're going to be outside on the perimeter they will not have contact with uh, with prisoners um, but yes we hope with our recruiting efforts and with the money that the governor has given us on the tax break and everything else we will get to a point where we don't need this and we'll be fully staffed or staffed enough to uh, not have an emergency and that's the goal and that's what you're seeing us do every single day and every year in the budget and all the other things that we're doing but keep in mind we, our goal is to do whatever it takes to keep the people of this state safe whatever it takes and that includes the children any more questions general it's it's all voluntary and because of the this idea of national guard and state guard let me just give you two minutes of background our national guard have been valiant warfighters now for for more than a decade uh, they wear two hats, a Title 10 hat, war fighting hat, and a Title 32 hat, which is domestic operations. The National Guard is, is authorized under Title 32, Section 101. State Defense Forces are authorized under Title 32, Section 109. Both are regulated under the National Guard Bureau, and then a State Defense Force is delegated to the state to decide how best to use it. Our State Defense Force is, is historic one of the oldest military organizations in the country, starting back in 1670. And we are used the way that our commander in chief is our governor. The brilliance of this is really looking for ways to solve a problem in a, in a very effective but, but a cost efficient manner. And what you see today is the coming together of those forces to, to present a real solution. All of our people are volunteers and they serve voluntarily, which means absent a crime committed while they serve, we don't have UCMJ and we don't pay anybody. So this is the same force that fielded with Francis Marion and ran up on the British. It's the same thing that's been operating since those days. Nobody's ever been paid. And as long as I'm commander, nobody will. We pay, we, we don't reimburse for costs. So the people that are selected will work with General Lott. We train to the same exacting standards as our, as our paid counterpart. No different if you want an analogy in the one that General Livingston uses, volunteer fire departments. These, these men and women serve, they train to the same level as paid firemen just like our folks. So the specific answer to your question is they will be volunteers and it will be voluntary and they will not waver. You know, General Livingston, is, if he was here, he'd love to, he loves to tell the story during uh, Joaquin, Hurricane Joaquin, where he was getting calls saying, with the folks are calling saying, we can't believe these guys are out here not getting paid. And a week later, they called back and said, we can't believe they're not getting paid and still happy to be here. That's the heart and soul of this state. And that's what we've harnessed and that's what the governor is bringing into play. Volunteer and voluntary. Any more questions? Thank you very much. General, General.